Welcome back. Between now and midnight, we're discussing hard evidence that something fairly strange is descending on Earth and leaving, if you like, its footprints for all to see. Take a look at this. These mysterious circles have been occurring in their hundreds, mainly in the south of England, though there have been reports from Australia and America. They can be between 5 and 20 metres wide. A close inspection of the circles reveals that the crops have been swirled to the ground in a perfect circular shape. There have been more than 30 reports of crop circles already this year. The question, what on earth are they? Well, sitting next to me is a man who spent eight days waiting for a circle to appear in front of him in a field. Professor Archibald Roy from Glasgow University's Physics and Astronomy Department. This was a very serious experiment you set up, trying to wait to see if a, a crop circle would appear. What did you do? We set up a watch on a particular field where circles had appeared, oh, about eight out of the previous 10 years. And what our object was, was to try and observe a circle, either by day or by night, appearing without any human beings around. And so we used video cameras and image intensification light, and uh, we had uh, uh, people on watch continuously for those eight days and nights. And what and happened? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> The interesting thing you see was that in the three weeks before we started, something like 91 circles had appeared in the south of England. And uh, then we started, and uh, as far as we are all aware, not a single circle appeared in the field or elsewhere in England. So and then, all activity came to a stop? Yes, and then when we stopped watching, the circles began appearing, I think Colin would confirm this, between about 10 and 15 a night for the rest of the summer. What conclusion do you draw from that? They didn't like us. <laughs> <laughs> you say, it's a very telling remark, you say they didn't like us. Colin Andrews, you have studied the phenomena of crop circles for a long time now, written a book about it called Circular Evidence. They didn't understand us. They didn't like us being around. Is that the conclusion you draw, that there's a they out there that's an ingredient in all of this? Well, there's a something. There certainly is something. Uh, unquestionably, uh, we have a situation here where, as Professor Roy rightly says, we had reports coming in at 5, five to 10, 15 a day uh, last year, prior to Operation White Crow, the surveillance operation, and everything stopped worldwide on the very day of that operation. It then commenced again uh, just 300 metres that uh, Archie, in fact, uh, uh, fell just, just to, to complete, I think, that uh, very important uh, point that the uh, commencement of the phenomena took off again <coughs> within uh, two th 250 metres of that operation, uh, within two and a half hours of the completion of it, and in very bizarre circumstances. What were they? Well, indeed, it's, it, we, it's something that has been referred to uh, on a number of television programmes without any uh, being given the time to, be, to, to give it uh, uh, any real... Uh, uh, Detailed, to, to having been. I'm not really sure I can oblige you tonight either. I'm afraid. <laughs> no, this is the unfortunate problem. But what we had was uh, the third showing of the five kilohertz sound, which uh, has shown its hand now on three or four occasions, and it happened there at Operation White Crow. We had the noise come up. Uh, nine people, nine witnesses. Some of them are here with you tonight. We and we're going to come to we are, on the end of that. We are going to come to this later in the program. But before I move on, what do you think? is the cause of these crop circles? I am quite convinced now, uh, having commenced this back eight years ago, thinking we were probably looking at some form of very elaborate hoax, I am totally convinced with all the data now at uh, our disposal that there is some form of thinking, some thought component involved here. Professor Heinz Wolf of Brunel University, this is very exciting stuff, that there is some 
sort of intelligence that is uh, manifesting itself here in these crop circles? Well, I think there's a, there's a greater tribute to the imagination of the people concerned than to the intelligence which is causing it, I suspect. I think that if there is an intelligence, it's a pretty unintelligent way of trying to communicate with us. And as such, I'm going to be terribly boring about this. Um, I'm, in fact, so boring that I tried to get the makeup people to make me up as a little green man. <laughs> 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 to make yourself more interesting. Um, I think that, that there is nothing in these circles apart from this in interesting stopping uh, procedure, which is the first I heard about it, but I would be more convinced that if they could make it happen several times, if you could do it every year, and for five years running, uh, you could make the activity stop by, by this interference, I think I would, I would be more impressed than, uh, than a single, single experiment. But I think we have an effect here, which is possibly related uh, to clear, uh, clear air turbulence, that's something which all pilots know about, and in totally clear air, you can have forces being generated due to vortices and so on, which can tear aeroplanes apart. Now, I think what we are looking at here is a ground-level version of this, perhaps not produced in the same sort of way. Um, and as such, the fact that, for instance, it clusters simply means that the conditions which are required to produce these vortices happen to be right in the particular place, and therefore you get more of these things in, in one place than another. But these things are happening in the countryside. They're happening in fields, in crops. Well, I mean, if this was true, wouldn't the, wouldn't the phenomenon be true in town also? No, first, towns, of course, haven't got a nice carpet of wheat or something to, to, to leave the footprints in, as it were. And also, I think, the, the building, central heating, the, the, the disturbance of air in, in, a, in a townscape as such, that I think the conditions for these vortices to build up simply don't exist. This is a very pragmatic solution for you, air vortices. Well, frankly, and I, I really don't uh, wish to be rude at all to the professor, but uh, I, I do feel that uh, he really did ought to look at the data. He's never been, certainly, to our database, and I don't think anybody else is here who's involved. Uh, he, he really hasn't looked is just at the evidence. We're, we're, we're really are. I mean, one has to say here that the phenomenon is not random. That's the first thing. It is not random. We are carrying out aerial surveillance over, over locations where these things are expected to arrive, and indeed they do. This right. is not random. <coughs> but you wouldn't expect, I mean, if it could take a certain degree of topography in the countryside for these things to occur, then it wouldn't be random. Oh, indeed, I mean, Professor. Yeah. But I, I feel I must also say that you clearly haven't studied the subject because we are getting reports in this day from Malay region of northwest, um, uh, in Australia, northwest uh, Queensland, uh, where these circles, we have seven having been reported this very day, where we have no hills whatsoever. We have them in Wiltshire, or 13 or 14, something of that uh, kind. Also, this very day, uh, on the tops of hills, in front of hills, behind hills. Uh, the topography, <laughs> frankly, I feel is well beyond. We're yeah, beyond topography. Question. Let, well, oh. one quick question. Uh, could you tell me where the energy is coming from? There's clearly is energy has to be evolved into to, to laser gas, considerable amount of energy. Certainly. We, Where's we, it drawn from? We feel that we have sufficient evidence which suggests that the, air, the energy is airborne. I think that most of us in this uh, research agree that it is an airborne energy. A vortex, in fact. Uh, uh, that, I mean, frankly... Let, let, I, oh, yeah. I, 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 I want to move it around because we've got lots of people with their theories. But before we go into some more theories, um, Busty Taylor, you have spent how long now <coughs> photographing these things? For the last five years, since 1985. How many photographs of them have you taken? I have about 500 photographs <coughs> over the last five years, and I've possibly found about 300. Now, it, it, is, is it static? Is it the same thing every year? Or are things actually escalating? It's escalating. I've covered the same ground for the last five years, exactly. Mm. And uh, it's, it, it's escalating every year. <laughs> OK, I think we can see one of your photographs up there, maybe another one in a moment. What is actually changing <coughs> about them? They're increasing in number, and then what else is happening? In size and also the structures. The, this one here, if you take on to the next shot, will show you it's a new type of circle, we have three rings around the main circle, and the middle ring, Very you good. have the four satellites. This has never been seen before. Now, what do you make of it? What do you think is causing it all? Some kind of ground energy, possibly an air component of some kind, but again, we, we just haven't found the technology to get to that point. You're just interested in it because it's a phenomena that is as yet unexplained? That is correct. Well, I bet most people think it's a UFO. Do we? 
bet lots of people think it's a UFO who are watching. Dave Fuller from the British UFO Research, Research Association. Do you actually think that this could be the result of a flying saucer landing and taking off? Well, we've been researching the subject for 10 years for the British UFO Research Association. It depends really on what you believe UFOs are. We tend to find that 95% of the reports made to us, we can explain. We certainly don't believe that aliens are involved in these circles. We know that there are many eyewitness accounts of these circles being formed. And what these people are describing are rotating columns of air. There are many accounts we're finding more and more each year. They see this revolving column of air with straw and dust being sucked up inside it and they're producing circles. What do you make of it? Is that, is it you're also with the association, Yes, Jenny. I, I investigate paranormal <coughs> phenomena, uh, but I don't think this is a paranormal phenomena. I think we are dealing with something which is natural, not supernatural, and we shouldn't be mythologizing it. I think also it's interesting what Colin said about there being an intelligence involved here. I'm sure there is, and it's got two arms, two legs, and it's called a human being, mm. because some of these circles are definitely hoaxes. We know that for certain, mm. and we also know that they can't be easily recognized. So we have to, first of all, find out which and how many of them are hoaxes, and I think there's a lot more than have been given credit for so far. Sandy Reid, where's Sandy Reid? Sandy, you actually saw one okay. at the moment of its happening. A real witness. Um, you were out, you're a naturalist. You'd spend a lot of your um, nighttime hours looking at badgers and foxes and things. So this is to explain what he was doing out in the field <laughs> at 5.30 in the morning, everybody. Um, what did you see? Well, I was on my way home and uh, was looking into the barley field from above it on a ridge which I was walking along and I noticed that the barley, the, the ear of the barley was just banging against itself like that. And this went on for several minutes, just twitching. And then suddenly, within 15 or 20 seconds, the whole crop just went flat. The whole crop just collapsed? Just in the one area. Just in the one area. Was there any other sensation? Was there a, 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 did you feel that there might have been a little whirlwind, a vortex at the time? I don't think so. It was a calm night, a very calm night. What, what else happened? Was there any noise or...? There was no noise. The, just the ears of the, <clears throat> the barley was banging against the other ears just for approximately two minutes, three minutes. And I watched it for two or three minutes, just in the one area. Was it scary? <laughs> it was a bit apprehensive. <laughs> so what did you do? There you were, apprehensive, well, and this whole the, circle's then, kind of collapsed. Then suddenly it went down. There was definitely no UFOs. I would have seen a UFO. <laughs> No UFO, no vortex. No UFO, there was no wind that night. It was a calm night. What, what, what happened to the rest of all the sort of natural things around at the time? The birds, they, they'd all went quiet. It was 5.30 in the morning, nice summer's morning, and uh, the birds had all been chatting, they just suddenly stopped as this was going on. Have you got an answer for it? No. No? Well, sitting next no. to you are two men who've got their own theory, Michael Hall and Andrew Makara. Michael, <coughs> Um, having listened to this witness, what do you think? Uh, well, let's hear your theory first. What do you think is well, causing them? Our theory is based on what we think are, are known facts. That um, We know that plants grow to a certain height and they can't grow any higher, otherwise they fall down. Um, we also know that there are, there are various chemical substances which, if they're applied to plants in, in minute amounts, they can cause a massive extension of the, um, of the stem. Now, these substances are produced by a lot of fungi. Now, fungi will grow in a perfectly symmetrical circle, increasing year by year, below the ground. We don't know that they're there until eventually they manifest themselves in the form of a circle of fruiting bodies, which people call fairy rings. Mm. Now, this happens in certain climatic conditions. Suddenly, overnight, you have a fairy ring formed, and they can be up to 200 metres in diameter. And they are known to have existed for over 400 years. And we believe that, that the plant growth substances are being produced by the fungus in response to certain climatic conditions. Could I? Dew lands, on, dew condensers on the crops, which are probably a few inches higher than they would be normally, and they collapse. And they collapse. Well, and man sitting behind you, George Wingfield, you're a physicist. What do you make of the... And you've studied uh, and lectured on the whole phenomenon of crop circles. What do, well, do you think of this the explanation? That explanation is totally absurd, if I may say so. I have studied the circles for... Um, several years now, and you can see by their regularity, their geometric precision, the uh, very rapid rate of formation just described by Sandy Reid, that this couldn't possibly be fungi or fungi. Um, <coughs> the complexity of the formations is increasing every year. We're getting new patterns. We've already got two new patterns this year, which we've never seen before. Would, would that 
that fit then? How could this all, possibly be anything to do with How could it possibly be with all of these new patterns and ever-increasing circles and different shapes? Well, I, think, I have to say, I think these gentlemen have been, just a bit, have been spending years and years studying this. They've just been going round and round in circles. <laughs> <laughs> May I ask this? I, I, yes, I, I, like just someone to say, had to say it. To say, I spoke to a far... Yes. Could I just say that I think that's really probably why the two gentlemen are here, well, with respect to I, just I, for I a piece of fun. I'd like to just give you my new evidence. No, I could... I have to say that... As far as the fungi theory is con considered or uh, concerned, it is absolutely mm. ludicrous. With the greatest well, respect. Answer this, now, answer I must this. say to you, we are looking here at a rotating field of energy, which on occasions ejects a third of the affected plants and throws them 30 feet out onto the surrounding area. Have you ever seen well, fairy you rings this do that? Can question? <laughs> the, the last, uh, last, last June in Bedfordshire, uh, Ch uh, Chillington and. Uh, to farm, I'm not, which I don't want to give the address because uh, the, the farmers are fed up with people invading the crops, that four uh, circles mm. were seen in, this was in spring barley, mm. and the, the, the crop, which is green, had these four dark green circles. Those are fairy rings. Which were 20 to 30 Those yards. Those are fairy rings. Those 20 are fairy to 30 rings. 30 yards in diameter. We all know what fairy rings are. It is That's perfectly just, understood. Just, just let what me finish. You... Okay, just let me finish. These, this, these, these circles were three inches higher than the surrounding crop. Aren't but you dismissing no, your so theory rather, rather out of hand? I it's, mean, it sounds totally, totally out of hand. It's totally out of hand. different. It's absolutely different. Just just make one, totally one different. last and very brief point. Can I ask these gentlemen how many of the crop circles they've visited? They couldn't have Can seen any. Can I ask any. Professor Wolf how many of the crop circles he's visited? Have, have you actually looked at one first I've never hand. been inside a circle. I've seen a great deal of film in the circus. I've read most of the books in the circus. And I say, I have, I have tried to be the reasonable man Weighing up the evidence, not committing myself well, to a to, you're the wrong man to ask to the a solution to a pet theory. I think it's a very good good um, scheme in the scientific world to try and stay within known effects, not to induce unknown effects. I have some sympathy with the biologists. Of course, of course, except, I, I agree except with that. I it's a speed. It's a speed. I mean, I'm I am slightly doubtful about whether it would happen that fast. I have. I, I must say, if I have to choose between. Fungi and aliens, I choose a fungi. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a man in the audience I'm going to come to while I pick up some phone calls here. Apparently, you've all been phoning in like crazy. But first, let me talk to Richard Andrews. You were a crop inspector yes. and a farmer. Now, so you're, you're a man that's used to looking at corn and wheat and barley. What do you make of these circles? Well, we all know what the fungus does. And in fact, it goes down in a random pattern if it does go down at all with fungus uh, problems. That's something totally different to the phenomenon that we're researching now. What we're talking about are these circles that you've had photographs of, and that is manifesting between the magnetic field that we have, and they go precisely between uh, energy lines that we can actually find by dowsing. I am a dowser, and I've been studying this for some five years now as a complete study, and we found that um, this is something totally different to that. Right. We've got a lot of phone calls, as I say. Some people taking it more light-heartedly than some of the people here, but I'll tell you that David Barrowman of Coventry called to say crop rings are obviously caused by people going round and round in circles <laughs> looking for good car deals. <laughs> Mick Harrison from Castle Vale says it's obvious what causes crop circles, a herd of mad cows. Sarah Beaumont from Tamworth, Sarah Beaumont from Tamworth thinks if alien life forces are trying to make contact with us, creating a big circle in a field is a pretty daft way to say hello. Here, here. Professor yeah. Roy, I mean, people do, you know, they kind of want to joke and they want to make light of it, but you take it very seriously. Do you think it's a little too easy to dismiss it uh, in a kind of jokey way and that really this thing has a much deeper significance than people are prepared to give it? Well, look. There's a well-known saying that many a beautiful theory has been slain by an ugly little fact. And in this particular case, I've probably heard all the theories that have been put forward over the past 10 years, and not one of them fits the facts. But the problem is that we still haven't got a good enough scientifically acquired database that is open to everybody who wants to study these things seriously. We have one bit of evidence that came up by uh, uh, an old colleague of ours, David Morganston, who was filming the other day for the BBC. You were filming inside a crop circle and the sound recordist picked up the most extraordinary noise. Let's see if we can hear it. That's, that's a terrible noise, just as you stand in the centre. 
You're getting a noise there, Richard. Very, very bad indeed. Yeah, I can, I can hear it here. I can this feel it here. This is our old friend back. It is. Yeah. Is it? Is it a? It, it's like, um, I think it's about here. An electronic sparrow, really, is the best description. That's it. That's, That's it. it, yeah. Yeah, this is the same noise, the same noise as we're having analysed the Sussex now. Just in the centre of the circle. Well, what did you make of it? I mean, I presumably you went in with your, with your mind open in good journalistic and television director fashion, and then suddenly you hear this extraordinary noise. What did you make of it? I mean, we d really didn't know what to make of it. I mean, let me just explain, that was a film that we made with Colin and his colleague, Pat Delgado. Mm. Uh, and what was happening, as you could see there, was that Pat, Pat's microphone was picking up a strange noise from the centre of the circle. Now, at the time, we couldn't understand it. We took it back to the BBC and we played it to people there, technicians there mm. who are not known for their flights of fantasy. Mm. And they, too, could not explain what was happening. So. I don't pretend to have an answer, but I just found that occasion very, very intriguing. Yes, yeah, sitting opposite the aisle, Chris Pyle, you're a farmer. You had a crop circle appear in your field. We did indeed. What do you think caused that? Um, well, it appeared um, after the pub shut on a Friday night. Mm. <laughs> um, and uh, it was in the most visible spot on the whole farm, uh, next to a road, which had a long bend in it so that coming from either direction, it was at the focus of, of both roads, on a steep slope, where a little green men, I don't <coughs> think, would choose to so land your conclusion? their spaceships. Hmm? Your conclusion? And my conclusion? Um, practical jokers. Do you think you've been had? Do you think it Not could be all. a lot of people wandering around sending you up? I can assure you that I've many interests in life and I would not have stuck in here for nearly 10 years mm. if I was now not convinced there is something mm. here worthy of very serious scientific research. Mm. And people like the professor and the gentleman in the front mm. are welcome to join the research because we need a lot of hands mm. aboard here. There's a lot uh, there's a lot here that has to be looked at very seriously. Isn't it too easy to play the cynic, uh, to say, no, it's not an alien, or, yes, it's a, a hoax? Uh, one would, I, I, I wouldn't say it's a hoax. I think that the, the amount of devotion which people would have to put into making it a hoax is, is thus unbelievable. It's even more unbelievable than the alien. So I, I would discount the hoax for the generality. There may well be some hoaxes. I would also discount the magnetic field because magnetic fields don't have energy inside them. You see, what one has to recognise is that real work has to be done in order, to order for this to happen. So uh, all theories which don't apply a good deal of force to the wheat or the grass or whatever it is are simply not viable because they couldn't produce effects. So we only differ amongst ourselves of how the energies got there. Now you we've got we've got agreement as far that it's very likely air moving which bends bends the wheat over.